Hey everybody, in today's video tutorial, we are going to discuss something a little bit more specific than usual, and it's going to be about working with prepared statements. So we're gonna take a quick look at how they work, and then one of the problems that we have to work around. So first, let's take a quick overview of what we have here. Uh, we create a new instance of the MySQL improved class. We pass in our host, our username, our password, and the database we're selecting from. If I switch over to Querius, you can see I have a database called DB. Uh, next, we prepare a query, and I'm just hard coding that in right now, and I'm selecting ID, title, and body from posts. So if we check here, I just have a very generic table of ID, title, and body. Then we execute this query, and finally we have to bind the results. So when you select, you have to make sure that you bind the same number of variables as what you selected. So in this case, I selected three from three columns, so I need to bind to three variables. If, for example, I only selected ID and body, I would need to only pass ID and body here. Otherwise, PHP will throw an error. And then we follow it up and we go ahead and we fetch the results because we bind, bound the results. Now we need to fetch them and we can display the title and the content on the page. Okay, let's try this out. Run it on the page and sure enough, we get, uh, this is the title of my article, but we do have one mistake and I need to make sure I should turn that into body. Okay, and this is a nice secure way to work with uh, your databases rather than using something a bit dated like um, MySQL Connect, you might have used that before. Uh, you can either use PDO or MySQL Improved, which are gonna be far better solutions. However, there's one big problem with this. What happens if maybe you're making a database class and you have bind results, you have to know ahead of time how many variables to pass here, and that's not flexible at all. The big problem is what if you're even building a database class that another user will use. Well, if that needs to be a black box, they need to be able to plug into that class and not have to worry about making any changes within the class. So what we have to do here is, as you see, I've labeled it as big problem. We need to figure out how to call this method, but pass a, a dynamic, an unknown number of variables. And that actually can be a little bit more tough than you think. So here is the final product, and we're gonna build this from scratch. Okay, so, Here's my new page, and we'll call this, uh, normally this might be in a class, but we'll keep it very simple and just make it its own function. And then finally, we'll call the function at the bottom. Okay, and then I'll populate this just with the opening markup. There we go. So the first step as before is to connect to the database. So we're gonna hard code this in. If you're building a database class, you probably would do it differently. You might uh, put this within the constructor function and you might prepare the query, uh, maybe in a query method or something like that, but that's okay. Uh, next, we are going to execute it so we can save ourselves some time and paste this in. And next, we need to do something a little bit different and we're gonna call meta, it's gonna be equal to statement, dot result underscore metadata. So as you can see here, if I redo that, returns result set metadata from a prepared statement, and this is exactly what we need. So why don't we quickly call a print r on meta to see exactly what we get here. So we get an object and it contains the current field, the field count, the length, the number of rows, and the type. So we can work with this now because we can use a while statement and we can say something like while field equals meta and we can call the fetch field method upon this and now watch what happens when we print our field and if we want to clean it up just a bit let's echo pre tags okay and now we can dynamically grab this information run this in the file again and now we have an array of data. Notice the name, ID, title, body corresponds to what we have in the database. So now we don't have to know those variables ahead of time. We can grab them directly here, as well as any other possible information you might need. So that's really helpful now that we know how to use metadata. So why don't we build up an array? And oh, I'm sorry, let's not do that. Let's create uh, parameters and we'll add a new key to it. So the best practice, let's go ahead and declare this at the top. So we could do it 
the very top here, parameters equals array. Okay, so now we'll create a new item, a new key in this array, and we're going to make it equal to a reference to this, also this new array, and we'll add field name. Okay, so remember when we came back, and I've already lost it, let's do it one more time. You notice we had field name, so we can access the value of this name by doing field arrow name. And that's how we get it. So all we're simply saying is parameters is an array, we add a new key to it, and that's going to be equal to whatever that name field is. Uh, the first time it'll be I, the second time, it'll be title, the second time it'll be body. All right, now we have to use this and symbol and this designates that it, it's a reference and I'll explain why we need to pass a reference uh, shortly. So normally, as we had here, when we used bind result, we had it just like this. And this is what the big problem was, is that we had to hard code those in and that doesn't allow for flexibility for future projects when you have to know ahead of time. So we gotta get around this. And the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna take advantage of a very helpful PHP function called call user func array. And this allows us to call a function but provide an array for the past parameters instead. So first it needs to know what's the name of the function we're calling. Okay, well it's going to be called uh, array statement find result. So we pass an array because we're not calling a function, but we're calling a method of this statement object. As we did here, we have to pass an array with the first parameter being the object and the second parameter being the method that we want to call. And then the second parameter of call user func array needs to be an array containing the data that's passed. Okay, so this takes the place of what we have right here. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get rid of this. And let's continue on and we're going to say while statement fetch. So now we've gone ahead, we've bound the results. Let's go ahead and fetch them now. And we'll create a new array. We'll just call it X to save ourselves some time. And we're gonna filter through each row as key val. So notice row here, we're saying we're filtering through them. So if it helps, why don't we print our row and so let's get rid of this one as well. And now you can see row is ID, title, and body, and those are the names that we want. So we're simply filtering through each one of those, and now key, each cycle will be ID. The next time key will be title. So if you wanna echo val, you can see the values are there too. This is the title of my article, here's the next one, here's the next one, here's the next one. So good, now that we have those, we can fill up this X array that we created. And we'll say X key equals val. All right, and now all we have to do is say results equals X, and finally we'll return results. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And because we are working with this results, why don't we go ahead and declare that at the top as well, just as a good practice. Okay, so let's go over this one more time. We're fetching the results but we need to return an array of the data. So in this instance, all we did was we fetched and we echoed out the information. But when you're working within a class, you can't echo this information directly from a class method. So you have to instead prepare it and return it as an array. So that's what we're doing here. We're filtering through and we're filling up this X array with data for that specific row. So now we'd have X ID equals the ID and then X title equals the title but we need to have multiple arrays. Otherwise, we'd be overriding this every single time. So that's why we take this results array and we fill it up each time. So results is equal to an array of arrays and each array contains information about that table and we return results. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now let's just call it. And as we're returning something, we can go ahead and say results is equal to this read function. So now all we have to do is filter through these. So PHP, and why don't I say for each results as row, and we'll end for each at the bottom. And just for now, let's do PHP echo row. And now we have instant access to each item in the database. So we have access to ID, title, and body. 
So let's go echo title. And we'll also do the body as well. So let's save that. Hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. Run the file and now we get it. So here is the huge advantage. Watch what happens with, uh, let's say with the before, what we did at the beginning. And let's just remove title and we'll get rid of this one too. And let's go back to before. We're going to get an error. Bind result number of bind variables does not match number of fields in prepared statement. And it's referring to this. So anytime the query changes, you would then have to go into the class or whatever functions file and update this bind result. And that is a huge problem, especially when you're redistributing this. So with index.php, we do this dynamically and we don't have to worry about it. So if I want to say, you know what, let's only select the body from posts and well, I go it out like so. If I go back and I run the file, we're still running just fine and we're not getting any kind of error. Okay, so that's what I wanted to teach you today. If you want to stick around, I'll go over it one more time if you're still a little blurry from top to bottom. We begin by uh, making a new connection to the MySQL improved class. Now, ideally, if you're in a class, this is probably something that would be in maybe a constructor function like that. Next, we prepare our query. This also might be, uh, you would call a method of the class, maybe a query method, and you can select body from post. You can specify what the query is. That way it's not being hard-coded hard into your method. Then you execute it, and then you grab the metadata for it. But to work with this result metadata, you have to filter through it. So we call fetch field, and that goes through each row and fetches the information about it. And what we really need is the name of the row. So that's why we can use field name. And that will be equal to the name of each one. So if we continue on, we call bind results, but we can't call bind results normally with when passing an unknown number of variables because that needs to match. So instead we can use call user func array and that allows us to pass an array for the variables rather than single arguments. And then lastly, we just fetch the results. We filter through those and we build up this results array. This result array contains an array of information about it and we return it. And then all we need to do is either call it or if it's in a class, you create a new instance of it and you call the read method and you can filter through it. So if you are building a class, a couple notes here is this should be put into its own constructor method. Uh, maybe your query should be added somewhere else as well. And then also you'll probably find uh, with all your CRUD methods that you might find yourself repeating this often. So you might want to export all of this right here into its own method. Maybe, um, I don't know what you could call it. Maybe something like dynamic bind results and then you'd pass the statement. And then this function right here would run and it would return it. So then you could just do something like uh, results equals dynamic find results and then you pass in your statement and then you would return results. And that way you don't have to repeat yourself for every single method. So that's something to think about. Now this is maybe a little trivial, but it's especially something when you're building classes that you're going to need to get around. So I highly recommend, if you're not familiar with this PHP function, do some more research on it. You'll find yourself using it often. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free just to let me know. If you'd like more tips, tutorials, and screencasts, just visit net.touchplus.com.